yeah. Did you just hear my assistant there? I did. Okay. Very that's cute. How, that's how I refer to, uh, since I don't really have an assistant. My Zoom person is my assistant. I understand. I understand. There we so go. How are you? I, I'm, I'm well. I'm well. And, and you look like you're already for the holidays there. Um, kind of. Yeah? <laughs> Getting there, yeah. We've got a tree that's almost done and right doing all this kind of uh christmasy stuff great great yeah, i see the decks the, the the decks are the halls are decked with holly is that is that was like from the song maybe uh, yes i think so please sing it a little bit because i don't remember quite how that goes oh you, you know what all of a sudden the the lyrics i do call them lyrics in music when the words yeah they're, they're eluding me, you know. Uh, really? <laughs> huh. Well, first of all, okay. let me let let me do my let me do my introduction. We're recording now, so we're on. Uh, this is the Dave Bean is a C list actor Zoom cast with my very special guest, Yo Mary Cruz, actor, host, reporter, bon vivant. Ne'er do well. No, definitely not a ne'er do well. Def <laughs> de definitely. So welcome, Yo Mary. Thank you. It's so much fun to be here with you. I am. I'm very glad, and I know, and I'm. I'm thrilled to have you. And you, I, you're perhaps the first person that I'm interviewing where I know it's almost like the tables are turned. I'm guessing because you're the usually the host or the interviewer or the reporter. Yes, this feels very odd to me to be the one being interviewed, you know? Yeah, well, see, on, on behalf of the industry, how does it feel? So now it's your turn. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's a little odd, but yeah. let's see how I do with that, you know, with the tables turned. Yeah, I, I, I suspect, I suspect you're great. Well, first of all, it is great to see you. I, I, I have, I haven't seen you since I'm going to guess 2018 or so. That's probably about right. Yeah, I'm going to say so. We definitely haven't seen each other since the pandemic. Since the pandemic, right. So that started 2019. Sure. And yeah. then we were both we were both working over at NBC or Perfect. Universal. Yeah. And, and I left there in 2019, just like months before the pandemic thing happened because I, I moved on to a different project. But now, if I understand, because I know we spoke, you left NBC before I left NBC, right? I think so. And I can't even remember the year, but I think it might have been 2017, something oh, like that. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's oh, been a so, while. Yeah, so it, so it has been a while. And, and, uh, and now, you of course, and, and I didn't know this until we spoke recently. So you're you're a New Yorker. Do you consider yourself a New Yorker? Of course. I mean, once a New Yorker, always a New Yorker. Right. Right. Yeah. And I yeah. still dress the part usually. Yeah. Which I'm which means in we, black. <laughs> oh, okay. Very good. Very good. Very very artistic. Mm. And did you used to? Because you now you didn't you didn't grow up in Manhattan. You were you you were in was it Westchester? county or it was Rockland but yeah it was you know in that direction just yeah. outside of Manhattan right right but you spent a lot of quality time in Manhattan oh absolutely that's yeah. uh that's where I really got started you know yeah yeah, yeah did you sure. did you used to did you used to cut school with your friends and go into the city and do you know New York yeah. things I you know I did I yeah. did I have to fess up and say I I did I did do that and um I never got in trouble. Of course. Never. No, you know why? Because I did so well in school that I would like literally wave at the teachers as I was leaving and they would just assume that, well, you know, she's got a good reason for doing it, you know? So Must be a project, a field trip or something <laughs> like that. So yeah, I, um, I did. I left school sometimes. Yeah. Now, yeah. did you, did you ever... Did you used to go to like Broadway shows and things like that? 
Nothing that fancy. I was always, uh, you know, worried I better get back in time and, you know, right. all of that. So right. mostly I would go out to eat and mm -hmm. just walk around the city, which to me, Manhattan represents so much freedom because mm -hmm. you could hop on a train and yeah. anywhere and literally be with like decision makers, you know, like everything. Yeah happening in New York. And it's got this vibrant energy right. that I love. Yeah. Um, it just made me feel like anything was possible. And right. I was right there to to get that, you know, yeah. whatever it was. Yeah, so. yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, I've been very, very blessed in my career that I've had a couple of occasions where uh, I, I went to New York to work. And one time, the time that I'm, I'm, this is like one of those moments where you just can't believe that somebody's paying you to do this, where I, I was on the phone with somebody and they said, okay, so you're going to be in New York this time. They said, so we need, we're going to get you an apartment. Where do you want, where would you like the apartment to be? And I was, I was like, you know, are you, hello, are you talking to me? I get to pick out an apartment and where I'm going to stay. So now I, you know, I, I've done a little bit of New York here and there, but this time I was going to get to spend quality time there. So I wanted to pick a great location. So I picked, I, I, I said, let me get back to you. And I just did some research and I got a place at 39th and Lexington because okay. yeah. where, where I was going to be working was at, I love saying at 24th and Park. So Park Avenue and 24th. And what I wanted to make sure was that I had a good long New York walk so I could just feel like I had boots on the ground. I wanted my New York, my Manhattan experience. Oh, yeah. And I, yeah, and, and I got it. I got it. I love that city. Yeah. Um, you did get the Manhattan experience because it is so much about walking everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in some ways, like I remember when I first moved to L.A., just just the move within weeks right. I put on a few pounds you know what I mean like not <laughs> yeah of course use, but, you know a good considerable amount of pounds just from the lack of walking because here yeah. in LA we drive everywhere right it's not as walkable as New York is right um, right so yeah you wind up kind of stepping out of the habit of walking literally everywhere yeah yeah uh, which he, I miss, he, I miss that yeah, well, and I'm sure you do. And 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 I know that a lot of the walking, at least for me, while I was there, was just burning off these slices of pizza. Because yeah. I, I made it a mission that every night after the last week that I was there, um, not that I was there that incredibly long, but long enough that I got to experience. So the last week I was there, I would walk home and I would hit a different pizza place, a different slice every single night. Because again, I just wanted to to feel that and taste that. So now, how, when did you move to LA from New York? How old were you, if you don't mind me asking, or when did you move? How did the move to LA come to be? And how old were you? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so the move to LA uh, happened because it was an El Nino year mm -hmm. and it was snowing constantly. Right. And I literally slipped and fell outside of my house Ooh. and I hurt my elbow, nothing serious, but it yeah. was like enough to me for me to get up and go, ah, I yeah. don't have to put up with this. And it yeah. was literally the 15th of the month. And I said, it's the 15th. I can give notice on the 15th. So I literally gave notice and I was in L.A., I don't know, a month, exactly a month later. Oh, wow. So that yeah. was, so, so that was spontaneous. It was totally spontaneous and I didn't plan anything, but I guess right. that's what you do when you're, you know, young and dumb kind of thing. Um, and it was fine, but that was how I did it. Is that how you did it too? Yeah. Yeah. What, what I, 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 well, <laughs> you were at least kind enough to like, think that you could, you know, okay, I can give them two weeks notice. I, I, I was in my twenties. So many moons ago, and I was uh, living outside of Detroit where I grew up. And I just, 
it wouldn't have occurred to me in my 20s. I, I promise you I'm much more responsible now. But mm. in my 20s, I literally said, well, let's see. If I pack the car up at midnight, the leasing office will be closed. I think I probably still had months left on that lease. I said, but I got to go to LA. It's time. Pack the Jeep up, you know, just like in the story, whatever movies, whatever trope, you know, young guy packs the Jeep up with everything, hits the road, middle of the night, drove to LA. And, uh, and, uh, and 37 years later, moved to New Mexico. So that's, uh, <laughs> wow. That's yeah. Shrek. Yeah. Yeah. But it was, it was for me. And, and as I'm going to guess for you, it was both professionally and personally again, slap on the wrist to mid twenties, Dave, who broke a lease because he wanted what he wanted, but it was the best move that I made professionally and personally. Um, and, uh, you know, oh, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> you know. Now, had, had you been, had you been at that time working in, in the performing arts in New York? Yes. I actually had a recurring role on a soap and, um, I, which, thought, which, soap, oh, which soap was that? What soap was that? It's one that's long off the air. I used to watch him. <laughs> Another world. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Very good. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Wow. I had been on all of the New York soaps at one point or another, but ah. well, a bunch of them. And yeah, yeah, yeah. This one, um, I did have a recurring and I thought, oh, I'll just commute. Yeah. And I did that for a while. Right. I'd fly out every time they had me in the script. So you'd fly back from L.A.? I Is would. Uh -huh. Yeah, oh, okay, wow. I'd fly back to New York, and right. I would do my, you know, my little stint. Right. But it got to be too much, and I wound up having to tell them that it was, you know, it was too much. Right, so, right. Um, they gave me a nice exit. <laughs> Good. Well, you, I'm sure you made your contribution <laughs> uh to to the show so that wow that's that's pretty cool soap mm -hmm. opera acting w when you're when you're not in the profession or when you're young and not so aware like when i was a kid and when i was just starting to act um well first of all even then i did you know i didn't have the looks or so what i would so for, for soaps everybody seemed to be so gorgeous and so I, I wouldn't have considered that. But of course, as a naive actor at that time, my thought was that well, soap opera acting. I mean, it's in the daytime. How great can those people be? But as you get into the industry and you start to learn about what real acting is and the technical aspects of acting, that's when you realize that in order to maintain a job as an actor on a soap opera, you have to be not just good, you have to be a great actor you yeah. have to be great you it's, do boot, it's, it's so game. fast yeah it is so incredibly fast yeah the scripts you don't have much time with them you you're literally getting the scripts the night well i mean you can get them before but you've got right. other scripts from other days right so um it's you really have to be quick at learning but most of all you have to be quick at delivering because yeah. you yeah. get like one take Oh, I was going to ask about that. Just like yeah. one. Wow. Seriously. Wow. Like, hey, we do a walkthrough, you get a take, and that's it. Yeah. yeah. So when people say, you know, negative things about soap acting, they're not getting 30 takes like a, in a movie. Or right, whatever. right. It's very fast paced. Yeah, yeah. And you're, get, and you're getting all those pages of dialogue without the luxury, like working on a film or even a... a, a, a an evening television show you'll 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 have a little bit of time to get your dialogue down usually you know obviously, there, obviously there's last minute pages but in soaps you'll you get the you get those pages like pages and you gotta and we're doing this tomorrow morning <laughs> i mean yeah. that's traumatizing you, you do you get really good at um 
uh, knowing who your character is and how they would right. respond in different situations. Right, and right. Just, um, my way of memorizing is that, uh, you know, if I understand the situation and I understand, uh, you know, how my character would respond, it's kind of easy to remember the lines because mm -hmm. it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. You know, so uh, yeah, yeah. You, you get good at doing that sort of thing. Yeah, that's, I mean, that, that's incredible. I will tell you that in my senior year of high school, I had, I had back surgery and I was home for a very long period of time. And so I started watching One Life to Live in General Hospital, actually all my children, One Life to Live in General Hospital, the ABC soaps. Mm -hmm. And after a while, they became my stories as, you know, my aunt or mother used to refer to them. And I, and I got to know the characters, the actors, uh, and that, and I mean, uh, one of the actors that really made an impact on me, and she is still kicking acting butt in the acting world, is Judith Light. Oh, yeah. Yeah, tremendous on, on Broadway. But, you know, she started out, I think, playing like a prostitute on General Hospital or One Life to Live. And and I just watched her last night in Julia on HBO, which, mm -hmm. is, the, which is about uh, Julia Child, great series on HBO. And Judith Light has an incredible uh role in that and every time i see her i'm like because i think back i was high school kid with back surgery and here she is and i've got i've gotten to, to, to kind of watch her progression and knowing that she's also been on on broadway have you have you done any did you do any stage in new york or in in high school or anything like I that i did i did um because you know if you're in new york you you do stage you do yeah uh, off broadway or something right um, yeah, so I definitely did that, and um, I auditioned for some Broadway shows. Right. Um, uh, I had chronic laryngitis at the time that I auditioned, so Ooh. that was kind Ooh. of a, a big hurdle for me to yeah. survive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but it was it was fun being in New York, and it was fun having those opportunities and. Yeah. Um, because yeah, I mean, my very first experience performing ever was on stage. Oh, okay. Um, Do you remember what it was? What was it? I don't know if I remember the very, very first time, yeah. but I was a singer to start oh, with. Okay. Okay. As a kid, I grew up singing at church, and then I had a band, and we actually sang at Medicine Square Garden. Okay, that's big. <laughs> So, and I was like 12. Uh, wow. So. <laughs> wow. Now, were you doing original works or covers of like uh, pop hits at the time or? I was doing, well, I did write some original stuff. Yeah. That day I just did covers. Yeah. 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 That, that's where good. I just did covers and um, it was such an amazing experience. And I think well, I peaked at 12. What can I say? Yeah. You, uh, <laughs> you peaked as a singer, at, at, or at least a, a cover singer at Madison Square Garden as well. But so when we when I think back or when you think back now about that time, what were some of the either movies or TV shows that you used to watch that you loved where you might have said, you know what, I think performing I think being an actor is something that I might want to do do you remember what what it was that like gave you the bug as they say I'm gonna tell you the strangest thing you've probably ever heard okay I did not watch anything that you would have heard of anything I didn't okay. watch any kids shows I didn't watch any movies I didn't go to movies I only watched Spanish novellas. Uh, telenovelas, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I watched growing up. Uh, it was a family thing. We'd all mm -hmm. sit around the living room and we'd right. watch telenovelas. Right, and, right. Um, yeah, that's, I think, where I got the idea that soaps would be really fun. Right. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. Oh, wow. That, that's great. Now I have to tell you, here's a true confession time. So I was in a relationship for a decade uh, with, a, with a woman from Peru who lived here in the United States with her family. And I used to sit around with she and her family and watch telenovelas as well. 
Oh, so, look at that. Yeah, there because they were uh I, I think my my girlfriend was the only I I think the only one of who were where she was totally bilingual. The rest of her family, uh, even though they had lived here in New York, by the way, they yeah. had lived in, and they're still in Brooklyn. Um, they had lived here uh, for, well, her, her mom, I don't want to talk too far out of school. I won't mention any names, but her mom is in her 80s now, still doesn't speak any English. Now, I'm not saying that disparagingly because the amazing thing to me is she moved into an apartment in Brooklyn and, and now she literally owns the entire building in like one of those real hot parts of Brooklyn. And I suspect that her daughter might be in line for ownership and I should have kept that relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Dave. Ah. Oh, oh well. my goodness. Well, you know, if you ask my parents, they will yeah. tell you that they don't speak English either. Right. Um, that's not necessarily true. Yeah. Um, yeah. My yeah. my parents have bought and sold and built many houses, and uh, they're making those deals somehow. Yeah. Uh, they yeah. don't speak it around me. Right. But they um they're doing okay and oh, fantastic. uh you know, so i know that they do speak it and sometimes i catch my father speaking english yeah yeah but i think he's um more embarrassed that he has an accent oh yeah so then he just says he doesn't if i'm around he'd rather have me yeah. too even though yeah. he knows exactly what they're saying he'll right. have translate so you know who knows i suspect that lady the mom probably did speak some english when oh, okay, okay. <laughs> even even i already thought she was a sharp woman but probably even more sharp than i i would have guessed because yeah yeah who, mm -hmm. who, who knows so so the telenovelas kind of lit the fuse did you did you study acting did you go to acting class or go to I school I did I did I studied Meisner so, oh okay okay yeah, I did that for a few years and I uh auditioned for all kinds of uh things and worked right. in projects uh, right. but while I was studying Meisner I was also doing news yeah oh okay okay that was quite the dichotomy because you know you you go to work and right. um, it's kind of like uh, at work, you have to be, you know, very serious and straightforward and not show your emotions and that kind of sure. thing. And then I'd go to class and it'd be like, be open and available, ready to right. be to, ready to right. be to. <laughs> right, right. Absolutely. So kind of, yeah, it was kind of interesting. Oh, that's very cool. Now, same time. did you, did you, did you find that, uh, at the time and, and now is Meisner. I just I had a great conversation with an actor, Frank Menelicino. He's a he's a uh, primarily a stage actor mm -hmm. in Chicago, and he's a huge Meisner advocate. I've dabbled. I've dabbled in a little bit of all anything that came out of the group theater, mm -hmm. whether it be you know Stella or Lee or Sanford or any of those any of those cats. Um, I uh, you know I've explored all of those and. In more recent times, I find that that Meisner, I think, is probably the most valuable to me personally, even though I I don't think that I yeah, I didn't I didn't study it enough to know that's what I was doing, but I was always the first time I heard an actor, I just I just say that no no no, you you're just you know, or, or cut, cut, cut. You're just waiting for that actor to finish saying their line so you can say your line. What I need you to do is really listen to what the actor is saying and respond truthfully the way you're supposed to respond and don't say the line the way you preconceived that you want to say the line. And again, I mean, I was very young when that epiphany hit me. And ever since then, I was just all about listening, 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 and reacting exactly the way you, if you and I were doing a scene, I would only react, obviously, to the way you're 
giving me your line, which is why I find those repetition exercises to be very, very uh, helpful. Is is yeah. Are you still like a Meisner advocate? I am. Uh, I've mm. dabbled in all kinds of uh, different techniques, obviously, yeah. but I do feel like, and maybe it's just because it was the, the first thing that I really delved into. Mm -hmm. uh, even though I had had other acting classes prior to that. Right. Uh, but I feel like it's very organic and it is very in the moment. And what you yeah. described is sort of like the crux of everything, which is yeah. I don't say anything until the other person makes me say it. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Uh, so yeah. I have nothing to say. I'm not here to say anything. Right, right, right. If yeah, because you, you... say something, then I will. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have a real conversation or there we're not going to be spouting lines of dialogue, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and this really this really helped me tremendously when I started casting uh, for my own show mm -hmm. and, and shows. Uh, I was I was real grateful because not only did that, that sort of knowledge come in handy to me personally as an actor, but when I would start to audition and I would in. And this is where you and I really had a moment to had a nice interaction was when when you helped me read what well, you read with me with one of my scripts at Universal. And the the as I'm audit and this is why I got such a kick and why I enjoyed reading with you so much. And I think we, we shared a little bit of this on our phone call the other day was I just remember laughing with you so much with this script. And I think it what happens is. For me, it's almost like, all right, here's a, here's a strange metaphor, but uh, baseball, I happen to have a, anyway, I played baseball for many, many years. And I remember that somebody, hit, I was in the infield playing second base and somebody hit a fly ball that was so high, so high that I'm sitting there and looking up and waiting and waiting and waiting for this ball to finally reach the top and come down. And as soon as I, I was sitting under there, just I started laughing like a crazy person, <laughs> laughing and laughing. It was because it was just like, so how do you explain this situation? And I, yeah. it, it, the reality, I guess, of how high this guy had hit the baseball, only me and a baseball person is going to understand this metaphor. But when, yeah. when you and I were, were, were working on that scene together, I remember laughing a lot. And part of my laughing was, and I honestly don't remember it was because I write drama, not comedy. Although many times people will laugh at my drama, <laughs> but oh well, critics. But uh, but I remember doing a lot of laughing with you. And I think the laughing for me was more like you were delivering to me more truth. And you weren't you weren't even necessarily auditioning. You were you were helping me. You were giving me some of your time, which I was grateful for. But I was just laughing. I was like, oh my God, this is so much fun to get somebody who's really delivering the goods. <laughs> well, you know? That was fun. And the script was fun. And honestly, I don't remember a bit about it, but I remember having fun with it and thinking, oh, this is this is good. This is a good script. <laughs> uh, I, I I appreciate that very much. But that is I get I get such joy. And again, it's because of this foundation of the various techniques of acting. That when I see somebody do it right, and by that I mean you can't see that technique if they're doing it right. You're just feeling what they're feeling, and you're forgetting that these are typed words on a page. Mm. And and so you know, kudos, kudos to you, you know, because <laughs> I've also you know when you're auditioning people, you see the other side of that more often than not. You know, and you're just looking for that rare person who who's just all of a sudden going to be real with you. You know, so I got I got I got that you were very real when it came to act. Oh well, thank you. I appreciate that as well. You know, um, I I feel like that is what acting is. It's it's bringing ourselves to the situation and just reacting in real time to whatever we're given. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, but that apparently is just one of your talents. Now, you were talking about the fact that you were auditioning, but you were also doing reporting. So yeah. how how did, where does, 
How does that start up the reporting side of you? You know, um, my parents, like many parents, I think, were not too keen on the whole acting profession. Right, of course. And so they wanted me to do something else. Yeah, yeah. So I decided that my responsible job would be reporting. Uh, I would do news as my responsible job. What I didn't know was right. that news was exactly like acting in yeah, the sense yeah. that you are auditioning. It is the same exact process. It is the right. same exact process as right. getting a movie role. It's the same. Yeah. yeah. You, you yeah. go in and, and I've done it for so many different things because obviously, like I remember when I got my first uh, job, they, they said, oh, you know, your, your demo looks good. Can you come in tomorrow and do a story for us? And I was like, sure, sure. right, yeah, you know, I'll do it. Yeah, uh, and and that's the thing is that I think I've done so many things because I, if I think it's going to be fun, mm -hmm. I'll put in, right, without knowing anything about it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that I moved to LA, um, but yeah, I'll just go ahead and and jump right in and give it a shot. I will try almost anything. So that, I mean, there, there's a confidence factor there that is so necessary for performing, whether you're acting, performing, or performing as a news person mm -hmm. or, or whatever. So there's a confidence there and, and you know, you and I both know, and of course it's not a secret that, you know, many actors come from a place of, you know, not being confident. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 perhaps they're trying to somehow with the auditions and with the jobs, they keep looking for that. You know, tell me I'm good. Tell me I'm great. Tell me you love what I just did. <laughs> you know, you you know, but, but and and maybe some of them get so good that they develop that confidence. But it sounds like you have that confidence out of it. Were you always confident? I don't know if I was always confident or if I could just fake confident really well. Right. Fake it till you <laughs> fake it till you make it. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. play confident. Um yeah. I think we all have uh, our uncertainties and all of that, but I of think course. I can call upon the the confidence when I need it. Right, right. And I right. Think that's my my forte. That's but, your superpower. Uh, yeah. As they say. Superpower. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So and between you know, between action and cut, whether whether regardless of the medium on screen or on stage between action and cut, you just, you bring it. And I've seen, you know, and I, and I think I mentioned this to you too. This is, I was going to say, this is the first time that I've seen you, but it actually isn't because I've seen your, your, you know, your, uh, your hosting, a number of your hosting gigs or your shows, whether, you know, in, in various realms, because you've got a pretty wide swath, you oh. know, so, so I've actually, yeah, I've, I've seen you a bunch. And, and, and of course, that's like kind of one of the blessings about having friends in the creative community is that I can always reach out if I'm missing one of my pals and uh, say, oh, let me, you know, let me look at this film or let me look at that, you know, mm -hmm. video or whatever. So that, you know, that's, that's, that's always kind of cool to me. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a preferred medium, whether it be acting or reporting or hosting or, you know, now let me also preface that as when, when I started, um, because things have changed a lot in the past decade or, you know, mm -hmm. in the past couple of years. When I started, you were an actor. That was it. You did not want to dilute from the fact that you were an actor by call. There was a hyphenate actor slash host, actor slash producer, actor slash whatever, was a very, very rare commodity. Warren Beatty, who produced Bonnie and Clyde, one of my favorite movies, was, I remember that it just blew me away when I was a kid, that he was, he was the actor and the producer? I was, can you do that? How does, how, you know, and now it's the exact opposite that you can't just be one thing you have to be actor host reporter producer director writer mm -hmm. you know yes you, you know whatever changed. 
Yeah, yeah. So tell me about that. Like, what is, if you have a preferred presence or discipline that you prefer, or are you good with, you know, do you like the variety, whatever's coming down the pike, you know, is a nice change from every anything else? I kind of take it that way. I love yeah. working. Right. And I don't see them as that different because in all of the mediums, I'm really doing the same thing. Right. I'm telling you a story. Right, if I'm right. This person, I am still telling you a story. Yeah. If I am an actor, I am still telling you a story. If I'm a singer, I'm telling you a story. If I'm right. a I'm still telling you a story. Right. So right. really, once I, I realize that it's the same through line, that I'm really doing the same thing, it's just a different medium. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't see it as that different one from the other. Yeah. There's yeah. kind of different ways of expressing myself or expressing the same, the same technique in a sense. Because yeah. Because I'm always telling a story. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah and, and we do hear actors and, and directors, filmmakers, uh, theater people all refer to themselves many times as storytellers. I do the, I do the, I do the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, whether or not I'm in service to work that I've created or service to work that I've been blessed to, mm -hmm. you know, to serve. Um, yeah, you, 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 do, you do kind of want to tell that story. That's uh, that's that's terrific. So. When you got to LA, of course, did you did you know anybody in LA? Did you know anybody in the performing arts in LA? No, I didn't know anybody in the business. I had no connections. I um, I knew people that I had met. You yeah. know, not nobody in the business. Yeah, yeah. So, so how I did you? How did you? I'm sorry, and I forgive me for for interrupting you, Mary. I'm just I find it just real fascinating because your well, all of our paths are different because we're all different individuals. But your path to me is even more individual because you spent you've spent such quality time hosting and quality time reporting. You have you you these are not you know I I've dabbled in a few other of the performing arts. I've dabbled, you know, just to see what that was like. But I first and foremost an actor. Mm -hmm. Um and I'm and, and yeah, I'm I'm proud of that fact, but but it's also I say that because, you know, I only started writing, directing or producing because you know, somebody thrust it upon me, thankfully. I'm grateful, but I never I would have been perfectly happy just saying other people's words for the rest of my life and never would have blinked. But you have a facility with each of these disciplines. So this is the fascinating thing to me. So anyway, I'm, I'm probably repeating myself here. So, there we go. Uh, so how was it when you got to LA that you were able to get some kind of a foothold in the industry? How did you... You know, I was watching the the uh, Gilded Age on HBO, another show that I enjoy. And the young lady that stars in that show is named uh, uh, Louisa Jacobson. And I'm like, oh, she's fantastic. I wonder where she came from. And then, of course, you know, I started reading. Oh, that's Meryl Streep's youngest daughter. Oh, I was, I was like, you know, I'm glad that I came to the conclusion that she was very talented before I learned that she was Meryl Streep's youngest daughter, because I, like a lot of people, might, you know, say, well, there's nepotism at work. Mm -hmm. I I had, to, when I moved to LA, now there was a, a family legend, I had two people, uh, my dad's cousins who worked in the industry in the golden age of Hollywood, like the real golden age, it's since passed many years ago, but they were, you know, pretty big time, but that did me absolutely no good. And breaking into the industry is something that I just had to figure out on my own. What did you do? I was fortunate to have a bi-coastal agent. Excellent. So when I came out here, the New York office set me up with the LA office. 
Beautiful. So I was able to jump right in and start auditioning right away. Right. And that was a blessing for sure. Right. Yeah. And um, that's how I started meeting people in LA. And that is how I got things moving. Yeah. Yeah. What was the, what was one of the, 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 it, it doesn't have to be one of the first, but what was like a project that you got, you know, what movie, TV, hosting, whatever, where you were like, okay, you know, where, where you finally got a gig that was like worth like, okay, I've been in LA X amount of time. And now I finally got a, you know, a good substantial gig. What would that be? Oh my goodness. I don't know because at different points you think different things are like fantastic. And then all right, of a sudden you right. know, you're so fabulous anymore. Uh, I was always happy to get like every gig that I got my, my yeah. first commercial, I was thrilled, you know, yeah. my first yeah. voiceover, I was thrilled. I, I think, I don't know. I'm just kind of, um, I don't know if I'm that picky maybe because I love to work yeah, and yeah. I appreciate all of the jobs that I've had. Literally, like I, I think the first thing I booked in LA was a commercial, and I was thrilled to have it. And yeah, do you remember what it was for? Oh my goodness, I couldn't even tell you. Yeah, I, yeah. Probably. Who knows? Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> who knows? Yeah. I, I remember one time I flew out to Atlanta to shoot something. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> Fun and they they had me there for like a week and and I'm right. going to some I think it was Toronto maybe right right that was an interesting one because they called me and said hey um can you audition on the phone mm -hmm. which was mm -hmm. odd yeah um, yeah I auditioned on the phone and they said can you be on a plane at eleven and it was like wow wow and I was like uh sure I can do that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What's going on? <laughs> wow. That's cool. What a great experience though. Huh? Isn't that terrific? It, it's kind of crazy. And that is how our lives are in this business because it's so unpredictable. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and we, I don't know about you, but I know I'm always kind of like ready to go. I used to keep my bag like almost packed. Right, right, was, right. You know, the essentials already packed. And it yeah, was yeah. Uh, you would get these situations where it would be like, hey, can you be on a plane at 11? And it's right. 15 or 930 in the morning. And you're like, My, yeah, if I race out of here right now, I can make that flight. Sure, sure, <laughs> sure. That's great. That's great. Um, I guess what happened was that someone who was booked on that job had gotten sick. Right, right. And so they needed to, they had a crew waiting to shoot. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. And it had to be someone who could do the English version and the Spanish version at the same time. Wow. They wanted to shoot and that, you know, English and then shoot Spanish and then change the setup. Move right, on to right. The next spot. Right. Well, it was very specific. And I was fortunate enough to be able to, to step right into that. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and it was fun. It was really that's, fun. That's, that's, so you're, you're, you're completely by your span is your Spanish as good as your English? My uh, or better? I, then? You know what? I mean, I grew up what uh, speaking Spanish, right? Of course. So right. English was my second language, right? Right. But uh, I, I speak more English than I do Spanish. Obviously, right. I'm not with my family all the time. Sure, sure. But, but yeah, my Spanish is pretty good, if I must say so myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. No, what a what a what a what a great skill to have. And that also, you know, one of the reasons why my show is is title isn't entitled titled what it is. C C list actor part of it. And by that I refer to myself. I don't refer to that to my guests. But that's me. Is because, and I'm happy to be that because one of the things that I think people don't know, and maybe they learned a little bit more about it during the SAG strike, which was settled recently. Mm -hmm. Which is, which is, you know, we all know and love to watch our celebrity favorite actors do what they do. Um, but most of us are not the one percenters. Mm -hmm. And most of us have, who, who at least have been fortunate enough to cobble together some kind of a career, have had to rely and been blessed with, 
you know, I mean, to be able to, to act in two languages, especially when that other language, when you're working in L.A. and you have cities like Miami and L.A. and in a whole world of telenovelas, to be able to do an acting job in both English and Spanish makes you, a, you know, that's a double threat in this mm -hmm. business. And that will get, that will move you to the head of the line very, very quickly. One of the, one of the, I, I still kind of laugh at this because I know I've asked you, but you know, about your early uh, instances, I, I still don't know how I got this gig, this, but I remember auditioning to dub Hindi, Mu India, Bollywood films that were in Hindi and they needed actors to do the English language version of those. Um, now, of course, I don't, I don't speak Hindi, but they said, no, no, that's okay. We just, what, they, what we're going to do is and I, they were, we're flying to LA from, you know, from India and we're going to do like four or five of these movies. So we're getting actors to do, to dub four or five of these movies in English. You'll have the script in English. And so I auditioned and I got the gig and I went to a hotel like out in San Fernando or some, uh, clearly the, fo you know, it wasn't anywhere near Hollywood uh -huh. and it was, you know, but these they they'd set up shop in this suite of hotel rooms. And so I would I just sat in the bay in front of a computer screen like this and with a bunch of other actors. And we just decided, okay, the director decided, okay, you're gonna do this character and that character and this character. And we just recorded everything. And so you had to try to voice match. You do this in ADR as well, in, in in English language movies as well. But it was just so interesting to me to try to voice match with your English the same time and intonation as the Hindi mm -hmm. language and try to try to hit that. Yeah. But I, I remember so, you know, you're you're obviously do you're doing I I had never done anything like this and I just thought it, <laughs> the cool, the coolest thing about that is when I left the room, you know, the the director just turned to somebody and you know gave the thumbs up. The guy walked over and he gave me like about you know two inches worth of money, and I thought, you know, I don't know how much is in there, but two inches worth of money, even if it's <laughs> you know ones or fives, you know, the young struggling actor, I'll take that. So wow, you know, what, you how know. did you like doing that? Oh, I, I, I love, I love it. I, I love it. I, I was, I was lucky enough that I don't know that I parlayed this particular instance, but I ended up doing and paying the bills on uh, just by looping. I was part of a loop group, Ooh. just doing a ADR stuff mm -hmm. for a few, for a few years. I would just get called in to this place and, uh, called Mo uh, Monkey Paw. I think it was called Monkey Paw Audio Victory. And anyway, I have such great memories because I would go in and we would end up, one of my favorite ones was a movie called, oh gosh, Aim High. I think it was Aim High. It was about, were they high school students? Oh, they were high school students, but they were also spies. No. Oh. <laughs> And because I have a higher register voice and and also I can bring my my high school attitude to my higher registered voice, I would get called in to do those additional voices where, you know, you got a shot of the kids walking, you know, it's the bell goes off and all the kids exit the classrooms and you, there's all these conversations going on. But because when you're recording it, you know this, people watching this may not. If I have two actors in the foreground having a conversation, the all the other high school students that are in the back, they're instructed, just mind, don't say a word, look like you're talking to each other, but don't say a word. So we could just get the audio of the of the high school couple, prom king and the queen, talking to each other. So then I would come in with my little loop group, and after filming had taken place, and we would then look at all the people in that hallway and see if we could come up with conversations that they might be having in the background. And then you'd record those and 
place them in there. Well, I just got lucky because that's the only way you get looping. You know, I, 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 you just get lucky to stumble in with a loop group that likes you essentially. And right. Yeah. So I ended up with this loop group for a couple of years where, you know, Hey Dave, can you, you know, can you come in at three o'clock on Thursday? Just have a couple hours of stuff. I remember the last one that I did with this group and, for, and forgive me, I now I've gone off on a tangent, but no, no, this is great. It's fun. I had I had so much fun doing this, so I get called and it was uh, uh, court Cor who's uh, Courtney on Friends, Courtney Courtney Cox, Cox. Mm -hmm. her brother uh, David Ar yes David Ar David, Ar David Arquette, Arquette. Is who, wait, yeah oh they were married that's they right they were married they were, they were married yeah. okay so David Arquette did this uh, post apocalyptic film and what they needed was were people to come in. They had one scene where they had crucified all of these people and they, but they, they didn't, they were unable to record the moans and the gasping as they were doing horrible things to these people that were crucified. So I got called in to, you know, provide the anguish voices <laughs> for these people. It was exhausting because we did take after take after take of like, Ah, uh, uh, you know, I don't, you know, and, and, you know, okay, now he's, he's, they're driving the spear into you and pushing it up into, you know, so go. And, you know, anyway, I won't do the whole thing. But, but <laughs> Come on, Dave, do it. <laughs> you know what? You could, you could, people can watch that movie. I don't know if it ever got released. It was called, I think it was called Orion, O R Orion, Orion, O R I O N was the working title. I never saw it. Um, I should take a look just to see if it was in there. But uh, but anyway, so much fun to do that stuff. Yeah. So much fun. You know, was did you did you and your because I know you you're very uh, an accomplished voice over artist as well. Um, did you ever do any of the looping or the ADR that I, wasn't attached to a specific project? I so, to a, dubbing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, OK. Yeah, I did dubbing um, recently was actually when I did it for the first time. And I loved it because I got to play like a major character. And that's like to have the whole through line of right. the whole story for it. It was kind of like a, it was kind of like a soap. Yeah. So it went from beginning to end and I got to play this character. I did some additional voices as well, right. but to play this, you know, lead character with all of her, uh, you know, angst and all of the things she was going through was really fulfilling because yeah. we often don't get to do a full arc like that. Right. Right. And so that was actually really fulfilling for me. It felt really right. like, Ah, oh, I got to really act. Yeah. You yeah, know? Yeah. Uh, in that sense, because of the arc, because yeah. I go from, you know, from A to Z with her. Right, and, right. So I really enjoyed it. Oh, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's terrific. And that's another thing that, you know, acting when you're doing it on film or, uh, or if it's audio work, it's done in such bits and pieces, unlike stage, where you're on stage and if you're, you know, have a lead character, then you're going to get to do the full arc of that character for the, you know, for the next couple of hours, let's say. But mm -hmm. everything that you and I do mostly, especially being LA based, um, is all, all done in bits and pieces. And if you do have a lead character, then yeah, it's great. You get to do the whole emotional arc of that. I understand that there was, there was, there was an actress, I want to say in Italy, who was the actress who dubbed all of like Audrey Hepburn's roles mm -hmm. in Italian. So whenever, you know, whenever they needed the Italian version of Audrey Hepburn. So she was the one and she was as like a big star in Italy I, yes. because the, everybody knew that, you know, well, we see Audrey Hepburn, but we know that voice and they kept with her, which I think is probably a more rare story. They, they just had the same actress or, you know, after, do her voice the whole time. So I've heard know. that that is actually common, and that, um, for example, now with this <clears throat> whole AI thing, yeah, 
They have someone who normally does the voice of uh, Tom Cruise in Spanish. <laughs> right, right. And he is the voice of Tom Cruise in Spanish. Wow, okay. What I heard was that they tried to do the AI voice using right. Tom Cruise's actual voice, right. but in Spanish, and people rebelled. Oh, Not wow. The AI so much, but because they were so used to the voice that they thought was connected to that yeah. face, that yeah. they didn't yeah. accept Tom Cruise's wow. actual voice. Isn't that is now isn't that something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It it got into their psyche, and they and they had a certain expectation of what Tom Cruise sounds like. Right. So films. now, when yeah. they hear his actual voice, they go, mm, "No, that's yeah. not right." Yeah, that's not yeah. that's not right. Isn't that funny? <laughs> that's irony. That's yeah. that's definitely definitely I ironic. Um, I don't know yeah. if that's true, but I heard that story. So uh, it it it. it it would it wouldn't surprise me, and then there's plenty of actors. Then and again, that just that just goes to show whatever language, not everyone is a name or a face that you know. But there are people who's who are making their livings providing these you know voices or or you know stunt doubles or stand you know stand-ins when you're a, a you know a, a big enough uh, actor or at least working regularly where you bring in your own stand. I mean Jeff Bridges has been working with the same stand-in for like 40 years, 50 mm -hmm. years even. And, you know, and that guy's been able to have an entire life and raise a family and kids through school and get the braces and everything. And he's, you know, and he's Jeff Bridges' stand-in. So, you know, there's a certain comfort level that, uh, you know, Jeff Bridges must feel with them, he, even though they probably don't have a whole lot to do with each other. It's, you know, E-team he... out, A-team is in. Exactly. You know. But but maybe but, at the very beginning he looked enough alike like him or the same height skin tone and hair and stuff like correct. that. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. know stunt guys who are the stunt man for a particular actor. Yeah, and wow. They are always that person's stunt man. Yeah, yeah. And um, and it is because they have a similar look or you know the same height and weight and then right similar hair or coloring. Right. And um, you never know who they are because they're right. never on screen, right. but they're right. the one doing all of the jumps and all of the falls and all of the crazy things that we see the celebrity supposedly doing. Right, right. And the stunt guy, you know, yeah. or stunt yeah. girl. I know some yeah. of the big stunt girls as well, you know. Yeah, no, no two ways about it. My hat's off to the stunt people. Oh. I remember my... One of the first films that I ever did was called Psycho Cop Returns, Psycho Cop 2, um, as if Psycho Cop needed a sequel. Um, so, <laughs> but I remember, I, know. <laughs> I was so green uh, as, an, as an actor on set. I was just so excited to be there. And so one of the scenes called for, uh, I get I get killed and then, uh, the psycho cop, uh, spoiler alert, it's the psycho cop who kills everybody. Um, what? Psycho cop takes, I know, it's, it's shock. Oh I'll, my gosh. I'll edit that out so I don't ruin it for everybody. But, uh, <laughs> but so in the script, it says psycho cop takes, God, whatever my character's name, I can't believe that. Anyway, takes uh, Joe's body and puts it in the, in the, uh, the ceiling and then the body falls out when the, you know, eventually the body falls out to reveal the dead body of the character that I was playing. So we wrap for lunch. I go to lunch and I'm really excited because I'm like, all right, this is so cool. I couldn't wait. So I finished my lunch early and you can relate, you know, you're, you know, so I'm on set. We had an office building, a whole office building in Burbank. So I go to the room where we're, you know, where nobody else is there, but, you know, being a good actor, I'm like, okay. Let's see. I guess what I'll do is I'll be up there and then on, you know, on action or after a while, the director will direct me to fall out and maybe they'll have a pad for me or something like that. So they had a ladder there. So I said, let me, you know, I'm going to practice this. So I climb up on the ladder and I'm, you know, okay, I guess should I fall this way? 
or should I fall that way? And the director, the crew starts to return, and the director, Adam Rifkin, who's a, who's a who is the director of this uh, film, uh -huh. Adam Rifkin looks up and he says, Dave, what are you doing up there on the ladder? I said, well, I just, you know, I'm preparing. I said, my character falls through the ceiling. He said, you're not going to do the fall. We got a stunt person to do the fall. <laughs> and I was like, I think like a kid, I, I was like, I get a stunt person? This is great. I love Hollywood. So I climbed down, they did the thing with the stunt person and, you know, so every time, every time I had to do anything for the rest of that movie, which was a lot of abusing my body after I was dead, I was like, okay, where's the stunt person? Where's the stunt person? <laughs> anyway. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. But that's, you know, that's that's how that's how you learn. And and anecdotally, you know, then if I would I would show up on and sometimes I showed up on sets where they didn't have a budget and uh, you know, where I had to do and I I never minded that. I'm, you know. At the, at the risk of sounding too whatever it sounds like. I mean, I was, I'm still a boy's boy. I love getting dirty. I love mixing it up. If you want me to fall, I'll fall. I'll still do any of that stuff, mm -hmm. you know? So I just, you know, try to be careful. You yeah. Know? But, yeah. Uh, but anyway, that's fun stuff. So, yeah. So you, you, you are, you are well-versed in the voice over world in, in, in two languages then. You know, I work at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I've done commercials in Spanish yep. and in English. And, and honestly, as a kid, I didn't want to speak Spanish. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't cool, you know, the, the society. Uh, was yes. Sort of, you have to blend in. You have to try to be what everybody else is. Uh, yeah, so yeah. I didn't want to speak Spanish. And my dad was insistent. He yeah. was you have to speak Spanish at home. Yeah, and I had yeah. trouble for speaking uh, English to my brother if we wow. were. And now I am so grateful because yes, of my course. father had not been so persistent. Yeah, in yeah. Since that I really learned Spanish. Yeah. I don't think I would have had anywhere near the career that I've had. Because right. I have been able to straddle both worlds and yeah. I've been able to work in Spanish and I've been able to work in English in both, you know, in all of the different mediums. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've been able to do that in both languages. And, uh, you know, that's how I've kept working, really, is to, is to have those options. Yeah, what a gift. What a gift your, what a gift your, your dad gave you, you know. That yes. is actually how I wound up with my bi-coastal agent that helped Tell me moved out here. There was a guy in New York and he and I kept getting cast as boyfriend, girlfriend, um, husband, wife, whatever it was. We did three jobs in one month or four jobs in one month. Amazing, amazing. Uh, and because we kept getting cast together, the uh, the agent was like, I want to meet this girl because I could send you guys out as a couple instead right, of letting right. casting, you know, put you with someone else. Sure, sure. Out as a couple, and yeah. uh, that's how I wound up getting that agent. Was terrific. Kept getting cast just like you and right. Judy. Right, uh, right. And that was like a fabulous thing when you have someone that you have that chemistry with. That yes. Just love you guys together. Yes. It always works. Yes. That yeah. is that is really good. That yeah, is yeah. Something to have. Uh, uh, yeah, you can't. It's it's a that chemistry, and they do chemistry tests when you're testing for you know big movies or TV shows, things, oh. studio things like that is like almost the last uh audition that you do is the chemistry test with the person they think that you might be right with but in this instance with you in this instance with me where people were have been able to see us act or present ourselves with this other person yeah i can see them because i you know you know how i just think they're, they're like there's money in this there's money in this these two right here without even having to work at it you know exactly. yeah yeah because yeah. because that chemistry yeah. doesn't yeah. yeah, it doesn't doesn't always exist that chemistry, mm -hmm. you know. Um, although we'd like to think that we're professional enough to just make it happen, 
you know, we've, you've been in that situation. I've been in that situation. It's the way it normally is in television. I did meet your wife. You guys have been having a fight, you know, and then you really need to go at it. Then you're going to make up with each other, and you know, and then mm -hmm. you have to be, you have to be that, you know, relate that that relationship is some has some gravi gravitas and is a real relationship right mm -hmm. away. You know, that's that's correct. Really and you have thing. to build that history in the next. 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you know, but it's kind of cool. I mean, most, that's the beauty part is that when you know you're working with a professional, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's kind of the beauty part because you know, like, you know, you know that I know that, you know, we just got to do this. Exactly. You know, we just, we just, yeah. let's, you, we'll just do that. You know? So yeah. now if anybody you'll marry, tell us now, let's, let's, uh, let's drop our social media handles and where people can keep up with you. If you, if you'd like to share that, where can people sure. find you? I'm you'll marry Cruz everywhere. So oh, literally, yeah, just at you'll marry Cruz and you'll find me on Instagram, right. Facebook, uh, Twitter, all of those. Oh, terrific. Terrific. Yeah. Yeah. Well, our time sadly has, uh, is, uh, is coming to an end, but I want to thank you so much for being my guest. This, at least from my perspective, I enjoyed learning more about you and your creative journey. I was always curious about that because you just, like I mentioned it earlier and I, you know, I just think you're so talented and, oh. and, and, and I think the word I want to use is, is the charisma with, it just just seeps out of your pores, you know, and and, and th this is why I've enjoyed watching you over the years. I enjoyed our conversations, and I enjoy being with you this afternoon. Thank so, you thank so you. much, and it's been so fun to like hear part of your story, and thank and you. how you've come through this whole career. I I've been fascinated, and I well, looked you up on IMDb, and I was like. Oh my goodness, Dave! You've got a lot to be calling yourself a C-list actor. Well, I I I, I appreciate <laughs> that. I'm just I'm glad to be on any list, anywhere, uh, at at any time. So I'm I'm grateful. So thank you for that. And at oh. this time, this is when I get to, to get to fumble around because this is where I'm reminded. It's a reason we call it the Zoom cast because you know Mary and I are recording this on Zoom. So now I get to go and find, sadly, that little red button where we end our Zoom session. But once again, go Mary Cruz, thank you so much for being my guest. And I wish you the happiest of holidays. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Happy holidays and thank, thank you for everything. Of course. Ah, thank you. And I, I hope to speak with you very soon. I hope so too. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. I can never find that red button. There it is. <laughs>